Unlike high school courses, college courses come in every shape and size. Understanding the types of courses and how they can best be pieced together to increase your success each term and as you build towards your degree is crucial. The type of school you select can impact the style and size of courses offered, but some universal truths can help you make the best course selections. This is the first in our series of three College 101 classes to help students prepare for orientation and for college itself. Hi, I'm Margaret Meek and this is College 101, a description of college class types. There are many types of classifications for courses. For example, there are orientation classes that provide an overview of the subject. This style of class provides a broad overview upon which your other classes can build. The second is major specific courses. There is no intent to the course beyond preparing students for work in the desired field. Another is weed out class. It is precisely as it sounds. The subject matter and grading are challenging. These courses are designed to make the students show more than their intellect. They need to show their desire to succeed. And this is just one example of how courses are classified. Let's keep going. Another classification you need to be familiar with is upper versus lower division classes. Lower division classes are designed for first and second year students. Lower division classes provide a broader base of information related to a particular aspect of the topic. Upper class or upper division classes are for upper class students in their junior and senior years. Generally, you can tell the difference in the courses by their numbers. These numbering systems may vary from school to school, but as an example, 100 to 200 level classes are designed for freshmen and sophomore students. 300 to 400 level classes are designed for juniors and seniors with 500 plus level classes providing graduate student level coursework. Taking courses in sequence is designed to prepare you for the greater level performance necessary in higher level classes. Another designation of courses falls into the categories of general education or core classes versus electives. This is much the same as it was in high school. Core classes are those in your major that are needed for graduation. Electives are categories of courses you must complete to fill your elective requirements. So, you may be a business major but require several elective credits in the humanities, sciences, or math. Which humanities, science, or math classes you take are up to you as long as they fall in the right lower versus upper division classifications. It is your elective hours or courses that can add up to a minor in a particular academic area or they can add context to the career you are working toward. Another manner of designation for courses is the type of environment established to provide the education you will receive. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory from their name, but let's run through them to ensure you're clear on each. Lecture. This is when students sit in a larger classroom listening to the instructor provide direct information. These tend to be introductory or orientation classes. The school knows they can put a lot of students in the class as the instructor will be lecturing. Seminar or discussion courses are small focus courses where students are expected to share the information they glean from their readings and their perspectives in group discussions. Lab or studio classes are hands-on opportunities for students to learn from doing the science, music, technology, foreign language, or art. Students also need to look for a recitation class that is paired with the lab or studio. In the recitation, there are small group opportunities to learn the concept behind the assignment and to ask questions. Students earn credit hours for the lab and the recitation. Independent study courses surround a specific assignment or project completed outside a classroom under supervision from a faculty member. The timing of assignments and the grading structure are agreed upon in the beginning of the course. Another course that tends to come at the end of the student's academic career is a capstone course. Capstone courses are built around students completing a project that reflects all they have learned in their coursework throughout college. The project may be an independent or group project within the classroom structure. In other words, students come to the class to receive instruction and work on their projects. And finally, online courses. These courses may be synchronous or asynchronous. Synchronous means that the class is only presented during the course time and dates assigned. Participation may be required or encouraged. Asynchronous courses are taped, 
Students can watch the lecture or presentation at any time and at any speed they desire. Students must still ingest the information presented even if they won't be called upon. Students may also find mixed formats classes that serve the course topic well. Courses may be presented once a week, twice a week, three times a week, or daily, depending on the focus of the coursework. Students may have two labs and one recitation or a lecture that schedules testing for a date or time that is different from the actual course. It is the responsibility of the student to piece together each term of coursework with course styles, workload, class timing, and balance with other expectations held in the student's life. It is also the student's responsibility to piece together all graduation requirements. Being careful and intentional will allow students to place their academic focus on courses and topics that will aid the student upon graduation. If students plan well, they can maximize each term and graduate as quickly and efficiently as possible. This time and tuition savings can make a significant difference in college satisfaction. It is also essential that students learn the style of courses they enjoy most or in which they can focus and learn the most. Then select courses that match those best case scenarios. The best and biggest advocate any student has available is their academic advisor. This individual can help students understand the courses necessary to graduate, when those courses are offered, and how to puzzle together their schedules. This includes how the courses are intended to build on each other and how to understand each school's definition of the courses offered. Another great resource is any upper class student you know and trust who understand your major and the college as a whole. Learning how to build a schedule and how to build an academic map to graduation will help every student make the most of their college career. Students must plan well in advance, even years ahead of when they register for specific courses. Understanding course styles will help every student create a transcript that will lead to a bright future. Join us for the next in the College 101 series when we discuss the types of college faculty members available. If you found any of this information useful, hit the like button or consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below.